wrote the thing I'm going to read in like 15 minutes on my walk here. So. <laughs> um, yeah, just please don't make any noise like this entire time. Just don't laugh or like clap or just don't do anything. Just just listen and then um, do, whatever, do whatever you want. Like while, while I'm doing it, like do whatever you want, but just don't make any noise. <clears throat> this is called Every Idea I Had for This Reading in the Form of Jokes and Maybe a Poem. The original plan was to do more of a performance I was going to call Shirt Coffin. I was going to wear 12 to 15 t-shirts with stuff written on them and then kind of act out some stuff from my childhood or whatever. I used to get picked on a lot for being fat. I was going to take the shirts off until I was bare chested because I'm comfortable with my body at this point. This is not the joke. The joke is that two nights ago after working a double I decided I wanted to get drunk by myself in my room, so I stopped at the liquor store on the way home and bought a four logo and a tall boy at PBR. I made it a goal not to leave my room once the door was closed, so I just peed in the empty four logo can while listening to old emo albums I haven't listened to since high school and editing this short piece of writing about a girl. This is where you chuckle out loud. Don't laugh. Just sort of chuckle lowly as you imagine where this is going, because this is where it's going. The Four Loco is mostly food coloring and some kind of liquid juice concentrate. So I was peeing a lot, and after one Four Loco, I'm generally drunk. So however much of the PBR I drank was just overkill. At some point in the early morning hours, I woke up after passing out and grabbed the nearest can. It was not the Four Loco can. It was the two-thirds to half-full tall boy of PBR. So, best, so basically, the can overflowed immediately in my drunken state. I didn't think to pinch off. I panicked, is what I'm saying, and pee went everywhere. And I fucking freaked because I'm subletting my room from this girl who was on tour selling pizza to punk kids or something. And when I turned on the light, I realized the pee had sprayed all off the hard, hardwood floor and then dampened the sheets in the bed. And in a frenzy, I grabbed every article of clothing in my hamper which at that point was every article of clothing I owned and used that to soak up the pee, and then I put all of it back in the hamper and passed out again. In the morning, I woke up and used a bleach wipe to clean the floor more thoroughly. Now you should laugh. Imagine this as a scene in your favorite teen comedy. It's funny when you disassociate it with me. This person you probably either know or have heard of. But this is a true story, and I'm telling it to you now to make you aware of the fact that I'm not very good at living, like a normal day-to-day -day life. One of the other ideas, I was just going to rewrite the first chapter of The Great Gatsby. I've never read it, but I looked it up on Amazon and went to look inside and was able to read most of the beginning. But I stopped after two paragraphs because I was bored and realized Fitzgerald was just a drunk and quite possibly ruined Zelda's life, or at least added to the ruin. And I don't like that. This isn't a joke, but feel free to laugh at the part where I talk about the book being boring if you haven't felt that way. <laughs> Next, I was going to rewrite a Salinger story, just the, the same one Gordon Lish stole the voice of. I'm not saying the title because I don't know exactly how to pronounce the woman's name the letter is addressed to, and if I don't know a word, I don't try and say it to anyone because I'm self-conscious and really just want people to think I'm a little intelligent. Thus, the Lish re reference. But anyway, I, could find the story, I couldn't find the story online except for a YouTube video that had each paragraph in a 30 second frame, so I got bored and eventually clicked on a link to Pusher T's album, My Name Is My Name, and from there I started watching interviews with Philip Seymour Hoffman, which is relevant considering the third idea was to read a poem called Philip Seymour Hoffman. That is the end of the jokes. Please do not laugh from this point forward. I'm going to read the poem now and it is very serious. It has to do with my fear of no one ever loving me because I'm not the ideal weight and how sometimes I'm very lonely. I'm sorry to be such a downer for all these funny jokes, but this is kind of how I operate. Here's the poem. Remember, no laughing, please. Philip Seymour Hoffman. You were 10, year old, 10 years old folding a blanket. The kids at school call you names that, he, that are not your name. They do things to hurt you. You try and mold yourself into its other. Become something else for them to know you as. You are 20 years old, folding a blanket. It is different shades of black and white with gray stitch patterns. You've, become, you've been reshaped into this thing the people of your past made you, other than body and voice present, mind tucked away like the blanket, hidden in a place where you could go to shed garments and sew them into the fabric. You are 46 years old and you are tired. Being all these other people has made it hard to know who you really are. You unfold on the cold floor, alone now, no voices to contend with, no light to withdraw from. It's just you and the waiting for rest, the ascension brought on by the white. 
white the ghost of forgiving, white the skin becoming once given up the, blo the boil of blood, white the color of clouds you are to move through into everyone, everywhere, all at once and forever. I am 28 years old and am mirrored in the television static like a phantom projection. Your mouth has been moving over my muted mouth for hours even though you've already gone. It was the laughter that reminded me it was all still moving. There was the performance and the curtain. You ended one and gave up the other like a balloon string slipping from your fingers. Thanks. <laughs>